and welcome back to my channel. I am continuing my Instagram series today with another episode. Today I'm going to share with you all my three step process on how to take the best food photos on Instagram. I'm pretty sure that you can scroll through your Instagram feed without seeing at least one food photo. I mean, it's what us millennials do. We take photos of our food and share it with the world. I do it every single day. This video is going to focus on food photography at home, but I plan on doing one on how to take food photos in restaurants and coffee shops because that's a thing and it's a little bit tricky depending on the area, if it's aesthetically pleasing, if there's people, and most likely there is, and so how to ignore all of that. But that is for another video, another day. So keep watching if you wanna learn how to take food photos like this, and this, and this. But before we go any further, make sure to give this video a huge thumbs up. All it takes is one simple click right down there, and if you want to, you can click that big red button next to it if you're not subscribed to my channel yet. And thank you, and now we can get started with this video. So when it comes to taking food photos, I highly recommend taking them in natural lighting. That means finding the best source of light in your house. Most likely it's next to a huge window. If you're like most of us, you're probably taking your Instagram photos on your phone. And if you've ever taken a photo at night, you've probably noticed that it's grainy and blurry and it's just not high quality. That's why you wanna take your photos in the morning, that's when the lighting is the best. And on cloudy days, that's when lighting is good all day because you're not gonna have all these crazy shadows. Another thing that I recommend is turning off all lamps or light fixtures you may have in the room you're taking these photos because it's often harsh lighting and most basic light bulbs have more warm tones in them which can interfere with your photo, especially if you have this clean blue toned aesthetic. The second thing that you want to focus on is taking time on the setup. So setting this scene and telling a story when it comes to your food. Basically, you could go for something super simple like this, just holding a smoothie with a white backdrop or bricks, wood, whatever you are going for with your aesthetic. Or you can go for something like this. And food photos are like flat light photos. They perform extremely well on Instagram and you're able to add a lot of props to it and tell a story. When it comes to setting the scene, it's all about the props. My favorite place to go for props are Home Goods and Target. They got everything that you need. It's where I spend most of my money. I have mentioned this in my other episodes, but for most of my food photos, I'm just using a simple white poster board as my backdrop. And then on top of that, I just layer. So I use different cutting boards, such as marble or granite, slate. A lot of these are just marble tiles from the hardware store. And then you can add things like mason jars, measuring cups. I got these super cute silver ones from Target. They also have gold, so if you're going for something like that in your aesthetic, definitely pick those up. You can add cool straws or utensils to your flat lay. You can also add different colors and shapes of plates and bowls. Really, the options are endless. You guys know me, I go for the basic white plate and bowl. I also recommend picking up different placemats, decorative towels. It's a nice filler to any photo. And this is the perfect opportunity to play with your food and just spread it everywhere, make it look pretty. So, for example, I made a smoothie bowl and I just surrounded it with all of the ingredients that I used. Being interactive with your food also photographs really well. So if you want to include your hands, such as holding a cup of coffee or taking a little swirl of pasta on your fork, it works. For example, if you make the perfect slice of avocado toast and you place a poached egg on top, you better get that yolk action. It's really the only time you can use the hashtag that yolk though. It's time to edit. And the best editing app for food photos is Facetune. Don't let anybody tell you different because there's nothing that compares. With your final photo, this is when you're going to apply your, what I call, photo recipe. It's basically the process you go through to edit your photos so that it matches the other photos on your Instagram feed, which is your Instagram aesthetic. Really quickly, I'm gonna walk you through how I use Facetune and how I edit my photos. So when I'm in the Facetune app and I import my food photo, I start off with filters and I go to lighting 
I swipe over to Gamma, and that instantly brightens the photo, it widens the background, it intensifies the colors of the food. Swiping up and down on the screen will either apply more of the filter or less. Once I'm pleased with that, I go back into filters, I go to lighting, and I click lighter, and that just brightens the photo even more without any of the saturation and contrast that the other filter had. If you're working with white plates, I like using the widen tool just to brighten it up a bit. To make the photo look even better, I use the details tool and add some detail back to the food and all the accessories that I used. To see the before and after of the photo, click that blue button in the bottom right hand corner and you can see the difference that it made. Super cool, right? That's the most important part of my editing process. I also sometimes take my photos into Visco and use some of my go-to filters or I edit it in the Instagram app, but that's just adding some highlights, shadows, and sharpening it even more. Those are my three steps on how to take the best Instagram food photos at home. If you need more help with your Instagram, make sure to check out the rest of my Instagram series. It's super helpful. If you have any questions, make sure to post those comments down below or message me on Instagram and I will get back to you. Hopefully you clicked that subscribe button in the beginning of the video, but if you didn't, make sure to click it now and make sure to hit the notification button so you get notified every time I upload a video, which is twice a week. Thank you so much for, ow. Thank you so much for watching and I will see all of you in the next video. <laughs> Bye loves.